If you think WX Widgets is just a C++ framework for creating desktop UIs, think again. It's much more versatile than that. Did you know that you can use it to compress and decompress data? In this tutorial, we'll explore the power of WX Widgets by diving into the WX Zip streams, which allow us to handle these tasks easily. I will also show you how to extract a single file using file system handlers, which makes the process much simpler. This method is not very well documented, so be sure to stick till the end to see how it works. Our app will consist of two tabs that allow users to archive and unarchive files on their computer. The first tab provides the interface for compressing files. Users can select a directory, review the files to be compressed, and exclude any unnecessary subfolders. They can then select the output zip file name and hit the start button to initiate the process. The second tab lets users unzip a file. If the only one file checkbox is selected, they can specify the name of a single file to extract. Let's look at the code starting with the main CPP file. In the beginning, we include the WX widgets headers along with our zip and unzip panels we will build in a moment. Next come the application class and the main window deriving from the WX frame. In the frame constructor, we create a WX notebook. This control will manage our tabs for the zip and unzip screens. To finish the construction, we add the WX notebook to the sizer and set the default dimensions for the main window. Let's move on and check out the code for our panels where the real action takes place, starting from the zip panel. Here are our includes for WX widgets headers, for handling files, directories and building the UI. The ignoring traverser is our custom object that helps exclude folders from the archive. More on that later. In the zip panel class, we declare some UI components we will need for compression. The source directory, the list of files in that directory, ignored folders, and the target zip file name text field. To make the code for building the UI more manageable, we divide it into three sections for loading the directory, listing the files and subfolders, and starting the compression process. These sections will be built by the setup methods, which we call in the constructor. Starting from the top, we set up the title label, the directory text field, and the browse button. We arrange the text field and the button in a horizontal sizer to position them next to each other. Then, we put everything in the main vertical sizer. If that's something new to you, I recommend my tutorial about sizers, which you can find on my WX widgets playlist. The Browse button needs a click handler. There, we open a directory browse dialog and call the function to recursively traverse that directory and list all the files there if the user clicks OK. Next, the File List section. This one is interesting. After creating the lists and the buttons, we arrange them in a grid bag sizer. This is an advanced grid sizer that allows items to span multiple rows and columns. For example, the ignore directories label will span two columns, while the add button will occupy only one. This little method resizes the first column of a list when its size changes. Unfortunately, this does not happen automatically in WX widgets, so we need to bind to the size event for both lists in our app. Finally, the handlers for the buttons in this section. The Add button shows the text entry dialog, letting the user type the folder name. If the name is confirmed, we add it to the ignore list and refresh the file list to ensure it does not contain files from that folder. Similarly, for the remove button, we delete the folder from the ignored list and also reload the files. Now the last UI section. This one is much simpler. We have the title label, the text control for the output file path, the button to change that path, and the button for starting the compression process. The first button shows the system dialog for opening a file and updates the file path text control. In the start button click event, we perform sanity checks to ensure all the fields are filled in and call the perform compression method. Let's move on to methods that actually do the work. First, the file loading function. The idea is simple. We show the progress dialog and traverse the selected directory, listing all the files, also inside subfolders. The critical object here is the ignoring traverser. Let's take a closer look, navigating to its header file. This listener will be called by the framework when recursively traversing a directory. It should be clear what its methods do. The onFile function is called when the system encounters a file. There, we pass the file name to the user-defined callback and continue the traverse. The onDir method extracts the directory name and asks the callback if it should be ignored. 
That callback is defined in the zip panel. We ignore a directory if it's on the ignored list. And for the file enter callback, we pulse the progress bar, showing the user that the process is still ongoing. Then, we add the file to the files list. We call the traverse method on WX directory to start the traversal process. When the framework encounters files and directories, our callbacks will be executed. Finally, the actual compression method. We read the values from the input directory and output file text fields, prepare the streams and show the progress dialog. The previous method has populated the file list, so we iterate over its elements. Note that we must ensure the file path is relative. We don't want the full absolute paths to be preserved in the zip file. The actual compression process is straightforward. Create a zip entry with the file path and read its contents from a file input stream to the zip output stream. At the end of the loop, we close the zip entry and update the progress dialog. And this is what this looks like. The first step is to choose a directory by clicking the Browse button. The system dialog appears and we navigate to our source folder. This is an excellent example because that folder contains many generated files, which will be useful for testing our ignored list feature. As you can see, traversing the directory takes quite a long time and will be much shorter when we add ignored folders. The list is very long and most of the files lie in the build folder generated by CMake. Let's add it to the ignored list. Now the file list is much shorter. Let's narrow it down even more by including the git directory. With the file list containing only the entries we want to compress, we select the output file name and location and start archiving. The process is fast and we don't even see the progress dialog. If we remove the build folder, refresh the file list and start again, we will see that progress dialog in action. Let's continue with the code. The last component is the unzip panel. Again, we have our includes and the panel class, with the UI components, the setup method to lay them out on the screen, and the functions for performing the extraction. Aside from creating the UI, the important thing in the constructor is to initialize the zip file system handler. We need this for decompressing a single file using the easy method, which I will show you shortly. But for now, let's focus on the UI. We set up the components for selecting the input zip file and the output folder. Then we add a checkbox and a text field to allow the user to specify a single file to an archive if they want to. Finally, the unzip button and a bunch of sizers to ensure the correct layout and stretching. Next, the button click handlers. For the browse buttons, we again resort to the system dialogs for choosing files and folders and update the text fields to reflect the user's selection. The single file checkbox enables the text field, letting the user type the desired path. Finally, the unzip button calls the perform unzip method. This one does some basic sanity checks and runs one of the two decompressing functions. Let's start with the one for unarchiving all files. This is the standard wxzip stream method, a mirror image of our compressing process in the zip panel. We show the progress dialog and set up the streams. The important thing here is the getNextEntry method. It returns a handle for the next file in the archive, transferring the ownership of that object to the caller. This means we are now responsible for releasing the memory for that object, either by calling delete when we are done with it, or by wrapping it in a smart pointer as we do here. For each zip entry, we pause the dialog, get the file name and check if the target directory exists. If not, we create it using the function provided by WX widgets. Then the actual decompression. We need to open the output stream and read from the zip entry to that stream. Finally, we move on to the next zip entry, releasing the previous one and continue the loop. Now the method I promised you before, unarchiving without using zip streams. See what we did here? We constructed the file name to open by appending the hashtag zip text to the zip file name followed by the file path to be extracted. Then we call the standard open file method. This method parses the file name and when it sees the hashtag, it tries to use a specialized handler. In our case, it's the zipfs handler. 
That's why we had to initialize it in the constructor. With the zipfs handler working behind the scenes, we need to open the input stream and write to the output like a regular file. No need to call any unzip methods. Here's how this works. First, we select the zip file using the browse dialog. Then we choose the output folder. After that, we select the only one file checkbox and type the relative path to the file we want to extract. After hitting unzip and navigating to the target folder, we see that the main CPP file is indeed there. And that's how you handle zip archives in WX widgets. If you enjoyed this video, I have the entire series of tutorials about WX widgets. Be sure to click or tap on the screen to watch that, and I will see you in the next one.